Hi there, editing me here just as a quick note before we get going. I messed up my recording settings a little bit so everything looks, you know, not quite as good as it normally does. But you can still read everything perfectly fine, you can still follow along with the tutorial. So I decided not to scrap it but I just wanted to let people know, you know, in case, you know, anyone was wondering, why does it look a bit weird? But yeah, let's just get on with it. Welcome back to the Hakari supplementary series. For those of you that don't know, this series is just a little something to tie people over until the uh, the full-on series comes out once Hakari Stable has been released. I am waiting on the Stable release. I will not start the series before the Stable release comes out. Otherwise, the videos will probably end up outdated almost immediately. Um, so, yeah, I'm just doing these to tie people over. And warning, this may be outdated at some point. If the series is already out, then go and watch that. In this video, we're covering the basics of slash commands. Um, so if you haven't created a bot yet, I do have a separate tutorial about creating a bot on the bot dashboard. Uh, that hasn't changed, so I'm not doing that again. So look in the cards in the top right to find that. However, Lightbulb has been updated since I did the video on it. And so we're just going to do, you know, a really simple bot with a single slash command today, just to kind of show it off um, and also show off how Lightbulb version 2 works because it is very different from Lightbulb version 1. And I am as well going to be showing off how to set environment variables using a .n file because that has been heavily requested. Loads of people want me to do the environment stuff like that. So we're going to start doing that in this video as well. So the first thing we need to do is actually install everything we need. So we need to install Hikari and then if you want you can also up install the speed ups. The speed ups are not necessary, they just help Hikari run optimally. If you're having issues installing them then just remove the speed ups bit and you'll be perfectly fine without them. Then you need Hikari light bulb which is the command handler. Then you'll need python.env which is how we do the environment stuff. And then only if you're not on Windows, or if you are on Windows, you can do this in WSL, UV loop. So UV loop does not work on Windows. It does work on Windows Subsystem for Linux. It does work on Linux. It does work on Mac. It just doesn't work on Windows. So you can't install it at all. So don't try if you're on Windows, but you can now install all those. As you can see, I have everything installed already. In this video, we're using Hikari Lightbulb 2.1.3 and Hikari 2.0.0. Dot dev 105 just to give you an idea of where we are there shouldn't be too many breaking changes between now and the stable but yeah I just want to let you know that that is the version that we're running so the first thing I'm going to do is actually create the dot env file and I'm just going to copy paste some information in here from my notes from the other screen so this is the bot token I will reset this before the video goes up and then we have the default guild ID which is a helper for slash commands. So for those of you that don't know, slash commands come in global and what I'm calling local forms. So local slash commands are slash commands that you give a guild ID to, or you can provide a default uh, guild ID in Lightbulb. And essentially, if you provide it, it will be available immediately, but only in that guild or those guilds that you supply. So you can give more than one. I don't know what the maximum limit is. If you don't do any of that, and you leave them to be global slash commands, they will take up to an hour to propagate, which is terrible for testing, is better for the API overall. I guess they did that to stop spam or something. But just make sure that you actually provide a default guild ID in the testing phase so you're not waiting an hour every single time you update the bot. Yeah, that's all we need to do in the .env. You can put all sorts of stuff in here and it will load in. I'll show you how to load it in when we actually get to the bot. Uh, so now we need to create a new folder. I'm going to call mine test bot. You can call it whatever you want. I would recommend that you make this the name of your bot. So if you're going to call the bot Henry, for example, then name this folder Henry. I don't know why I keep going back to Henry. It's just the name I keep going back to, I suppose. And then we're going to create an init.py file and make sure to put two underscores either side of the word init and make sure to only use one N. And then here we're going to import .env and then .env.load.env. Uh, so that will load, you know, everything in this .env file, pretty much. And that's all we need to do in there. And then we make another new file called main.py with two underscores either side of main. And then we do from testbot, or the name of your thing, import bot. Uh, and then if name double equals main. So this just makes sure that you're intentionally running this code instead of accidentally importing it. And then we do bot.run. 
So this is importing a module that we're going to create, not the actual bot itself. And then we're going to create a run method that handles everything. And then we need to create a third and final um, file, which we're going to spend the rest of the video inside called bot.py. And in here, we need to import OS, import Hikari, and then import Lightbulb as well. So to actually create the bot is quite simple. We just do bot equals lightbulb.bot app. And then we pass our environment variable containing our token, which we loaded in from the, uh, the .env .env. We supply our default enable guilds. So this essentially adds a default. So you can, with each individual slash command, set the default enable guild. So if you're testing just one new command, you can do that. But if you pass it here, then this is just the default that Libob will use for everything. So it's often good to pass it here. And then we set that to the integer value of the environment variable of our default guild ID, which again, we loaded up before. And then we can activate the help slash command because why not? This is a slash command video, might as well do that. And then for the purposes of this video, we're just going to use all intents. So of course you can supply any intents you want. Again, if you're confused by that, then the bot development dashboard tutorial should help you with it. And then we're going to create our run function here. Um, so we're going to set if os.name does not equal nt. So this basically ensures that, you know, if you're on Windows, this code doesn't run. And that's because we're going to import UV loop here, which we can't install on Windows and then UV loop dot install. Uh, UV loop is optional. I should say, if you're having a lot of issues with it, you can get rid of it and just use AOO or not AOO, HTTP, uh, async IO instead. UV loop is basically just a faster event loop that helps speed the bot up. But again, doesn't work on Windows, yada, 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 all that crap. You don't need it, but there you go. And then we do bot.run and that will run the bot. So to actually create a slash command, you can do it through here using the bot or you can use a plugin if you want. I'm probably gonna do a separate supplementary on plugins because I just wanna cover one thing at a time at the moment, but it's really not an awful lot different. So initially you need to do either bot.command or plugin.command. So if, you, if you're in a plugin, you'd, you'd say, you know, plugin here instead of bot. But if you're just in this file, you use bot. And everything else is the same between uh, plugins and the bot. So you don't need to worry about that. And that also needs to be an at because it's a decorator. <laughs> and then you create the command using at lightbulb.command. And then we're going to create a simple say command. So this is sort of the slash command. I'm saying command a lot. I'm realizing that now. But this is a slash command implementation of an echo, essentially, because it's not going to send the original message well, it's not going to show the original message that you sent because you don't technically send one. So it's not really an echo, but you know, you get the idea, uh, make the bot say something. So this is the name of the command and the description of it or the help text. Uh, both of these things are compulsory. And this decorator turns your function into a command object. And this decorator registers it with either the bot or the plugin, which is why you have two that look very similar just to, you know, clear up any confusion. I'm sure one or two people would have, uh, had some questions about that. And then before we actually start writing the function, we need to do lightbulb.implements as well. Now this is where the genius of lightbulb starts coming in because you can do lightbulb.prefix command and lightbulb.slash command. And this will create the command as an old style prefix command and a new style slash command. It will do both and it will work with both. You don't need two separate functions. You just create the one and it does it both which is really, really cool. There's only like a very, very few libraries, I think at all in any language that can do this. So that's really cool. But considering we're just talking about slash commands today, we're gonna to get rid of this uh, prefix command because we don't need it. And we're also, before I actually write the function, we're gonna create an option as well. So in terms of slash commands and prefix commands, you need this. And this is an option to essentially you know, this is like an argument that you would pass through. So if you've never used slash commands before, it would make more sense in a bit. We can say we can pass through the text and the thing to say, we'll just call it, because why not? And then we create our function. So we're just gonna create command say, and then we pass our context. If you're using type hints, you want lightbulb.slash context. 
um, or prefix context or just context if we're using both but I'm just using slash command so I'll just use this and then we return none and then we await ctx.respond and then ctx.options.text. So you may have realized already that we're not using argument passing with the options. And that's because all of the option values get stored in this options kind of object uh, that is connected to the context. So to access this, you would use ctx.options.text. It's just a nice little web, uh, way to containerize everything. Um, and make it slightly easier to access. So if you were to run the bot now using Python dash M test bot or the name of your bot. So you get all this information, process commands and it's successfully completed or successfully started, sorry. If you go back in here and we go into videos, that was just me testing stuff before starting recording this. If you use the say command and then you see this text option, which we set here. If this is a prefix command, you would just do, you know, the prefix say and then space and then the text. But in this case, uh, it's a slash command, so we just do this. We say this is, can I make this a bit bigger? There we go. A test for the video. Now I've used that, and the bot I said this is a test for the video. So you can see why it's not an echo command, because you know the bot doesn't actually use, uh, or sorry, you don't actually send the message, you send the request per se, and the bot is the one that sends the message. But you can, of course, see the actual um, command invocation here. So that's all well and good, and it works quite well. But what if you wanted to, you know, lock down the command to specific people, and what if you wanted to add a cooldown to it? Now that is what the rest of this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you very quickly how to do stuff like that. So checks allow you to kind of control who can use the command and who can't. I'm not 100% sure if the, if the ordering of the checks matters, but I've always put it above all the options. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna keep it. You can experiment with that if you want. And then there are a few built-in ones as well. So you can do lightbulb.owner only, and this will make sure that only the owner can run the bot. Or you can add a check, something like this. I'm copying and pasting it from my notes. Where it checks to see if the owner has a role that has this role ID. Uh, you can use both at once, in this case it wouldn't be particularly useful, or you can just use one or the other. You can also pass in your own functions here, so so long as it is either a callable, I think awaitables work as well, or if the function you pass in returns a callable, so something like this, then it will work fine with check. So it's just kind of you know running an additional function to check that everything is working fine. Uh, we're going to get rid of, no, we're just going to leave everything there for now, why not? And then cooldowns work kind of in a similar-ish sort of vein. So I'm putting it above the checks again, I don't know if the if the ordering necessarily matters. Uh, I'm going to do lightbulb.add cooldown. And this takes three arguments, and this is very similarly done to discord.py, so you'll be in very familiar territory if you know about this already. So the first one is the length of the cooldown, so we're going to say 15.0, then the number of uses, so we're going to say 1, and then the bucket um, again works roughly the same. So you have, for example, lightbulb.user bucket, which means that the, the user cannot use this command in any server for the next 15 seconds. If you have a guild bucket, it means that, the, it means that no one in a particular server can use the command for 15 seconds. There are others as well, but these are the only two that really are useful most of the time. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd add that. Uh, and we can see the cooldown at least running. It's, it's difficult to show the checks <laughs> uh, running without like a test account. I might boot one up for the end of the video. But if I use say, you know, this, you don't need quotes, this is a test. And if I try it again, say hi. We'll get, uh, we'll get an error, so it won't actually send uh, the error in the actual thing, in, in the Discord client. There we go. Can't find the words for some reason. Uh, you'll have to do your own error handling yourself. This video is not concerned with that, but you do get this error down here. So you can catch command is on cooldown. This command is on cooldown. And then I believe this error also has the amount of time until the next request as well. So you can send that too. <clears throat> and the checks 
raise a similar error. So if there's a check failure, or raise lightbulb.errors to check failure uh, if you wanted to look at that. But I'll leave you to experiment with that uh, because that is all I'm going to talk about today. So if you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to let me know. It helps out a lot. And subscribe, especially if you are waiting for the updated full-on series. In the meantime, you can join the Hikari Discord server using the link in the description, and my server is also providing help for it too. If you want a little bit more help, then there are some text guides available made by some of my friends. So Neon John has a good one for light bulb. It's not quite complete at time of recording, but it is pretty good and pretty comprehensive. It allows you to kind of, well, it runs you through a step-by-step -step process of how to actually create a light bulb bot. It's a little more detailed than what I did in this video. This is mainly slash command, so I'd recommend going to look at that. If you wanted to try out Tangen, which is a different command handler, then Patchwork Collective has a guide for that one as well. So you can compare the two and see which one you prefer, because Hikari is all about extensibility and choice and not limiting you to one option in case you don't really like it because everyone's different and the world would be terrible if that wasn't true but yeah that really is everything now just want to really quickly say thanks to my amazing patrons on screen now one pound a month and you can be on that screen too and i will see you hopefully midweek uh, i know i missed last week's upload because i had technical difficulties all over the place but i'm doing two videos this week and that will be something else i'm not really sure i might do a video on plugins actually yeah that'd be a good idea i'll do a video on plugins to kind of show people, you know, how those work. So you can convert this into a, into a plugin system. But yeah, I'll see you for that.